Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Glory is This is the day we have been waiting for. This marks the end of that long season of Lent. This is the day we can stand up and rejoice. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Lord is risen Hallelujah! We shall start off the service in song. Turning to number 207 in the blue hymnals. Blue hymnals are located at the end of the pews, number 207. Please stand. Remember what I told you about the hallelujahs? There's a bunch of them in this song. Uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Page 356, the Gloria, together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. We are seated at the right hand. Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are holy one. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to die on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection deliver us from the power of the enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's Word. Our first lesson comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. The reading can be found on our online bulletin for your personal Bibles. A reading from Isaiah. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well matured wines, of rich food filled with mar marrow, of well matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of this people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2, and verses 14 through 24. The psalm is found on page 760 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us read Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2, and verses 14 through 24 responsibly. Bible, I will begin. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. My apologies, let's start over. <laughs> Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures Continuing with verse 14. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is 
righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for your answer to me and have come my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in him. Our second lesson comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapters 10, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. The reading can be found in your online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in, the, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses. And who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify, testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they've laid him. So Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter came following him and went to the tomb, he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the, other disciple, then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and saw two angels in white standing where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? He said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said that, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? 
Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Raboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please pray with and for me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Savior and Redeemer. Father God, may only your words be spoken and your words heard. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Can I get the young ones to come on down? been up very early this morning, right? And oh my goodness, we got more ones. Come on down. Come on. Oh my goodness. Look at everybody down here. Okay, I know you guys are up very early because you know that this is Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, and it's a very special Sunday. Why is it special? Jesus. Jesus! That is an excellent answer. Well, what's the other reason why we're excited today? You came back like, you know what else is really popular today? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very popular today. Come on now. Right? Because we know you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but we know you're also going to get filled with candy. <laughs> right? But Easter is not about candy, but it's all about the Holy Spirit. Easter's not about candy or any of that, it's all about the Holy Spirit, right? Jesus rose from the dead. So is that why we're celebrating today? Yes. yes. Okay, enough said. <laughs> no, no, you can't, baby.
it is always a wonderful thing when we can hear the gospel out of the mouths of children. It is a beautiful thing to know that they know what we need to be reminded of on a regular basis. We are, as the sign out says, front says, we are having both a sunrise service and we're going to have a community service. The sunrise service is because that's what happened on resurrection morning. The sun rose. And the sun rose in a spectacular way. Hallelujah. 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 The sun rose. There is an excellent depiction of the stone, the stone being removed from the tomb in the movie Risen. Secular movie, but absolutely brilliantly well done. In the movie, they have shown that the stone that had been placed over the front of the tomb had been anchored down with many ropes. That it had been anchored into the wall, and it was tied left, right, and center by Roman soldiers who were really good at tying knots. And in several places where the knots overlapped, the centurion in charge had affixed a seal on the rope so he could tell if anything had happened to it. But when Mary and, P and Peter and the disciple that he loved came to it, those ropes had exploded. You know, you can tell the difference between a rope that is ripped apart and a rope that is cut. You can see the defined edges, and when you put the rope together, you can see how it had been cut by a sharp knife. But when they took a look at those ropes, they were frayed in such a manner that they knew that something very powerful had taken place. And the way that the ropes had exploded, it showed that they came from the inside out to be exploded. That that's how Jesus rose. He blasted through the door. I mean, that's just exciting. He didn't rise. He rose from the grave. We're celebrating that today. But as we remember that, there was a portion of him rising from the grave that puts a, a burden on us. Because when he rose from the gate, he came back and commanded us to do something. He commanded us to do some community service. Now, I don't anticipate anybody out there has ever had to do any community service. <laughs> there might be a couple of you who've had to do some community service from time to time. That is, you had to go out and show some goodwill to the community that you had broken the laws of society and some judge commanded you, yep, yeah, you have uh, you've run afoul of the law. And because you have broken the law, we're not going to put you in jail. We're not going to put you in a tomb. We're going to let you out. But you need to show us, you need to show me that you are a changed individual. That you've had a change of heart. That the person that you were is not the person that you are. The things that you did don't define you today. And the way that's going to happen is you're going to do some community service. We've had a number of people who've come to the church to show us some community service. As a matter of fact, it was one a young lady a couple of days ago who gave me the theme for this sermon, which is community service, because we all now must go out and do some community service. We have a judge who raised son from the dead who erased all of our sins, who said that if you are in Christ, you are now a new creation. The things that you did is not who you are. Your sins have been erased. You are a new creation because my son did this, and because he did it, y'all have something you need to do. Y'all need to do some community service. Now, some of you are going, well, wait a minute, uh, Father Daniel, um, I've never broken any laws. At least I've never been caught. I, I've never gone before a judge 
So why do I need any community service? Well, if Jesus hadn't died for us, if he hadn't erased all of our sins, we would still go through that judge and the judgment that that would put on us would separate us from God forever. And that sentence has been taken apart. So out of love, respect, thankfulness, we ought to be willing to say, yes, I will do whatever I need to do. I will do whatever I can, whatever you tell me to do, to go out and make sure that other people will understand what has been done for me can be done for them. To let other people know that the sun rose and lives for us. Amen? Anybody out there excited to go out there and do any community service? Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> because that's hard work. It really is hard work to go out and do some community service. But I'm here to tell you, I'd rather do that community service than the service that I would have to do if Jesus had died and stayed dead. Amen. Amen. I'd rather go out there and do that all day long, 24-7, than spend an eternity separated from God. And what he's calling us to do is a really simple thing, is to tell the story. In our epistle lesson today, Simon Peter is just telling God's story, telling the people what they saw, what they knew to be true, and how it is applicable to them, the same as it has been for all of us. Our story is going out and telling the people how Jesus has risen in our lives and how we have been changed because of it. And I strongly suspect that there isn't anybody out there who hasn't had a personal encounter with the living Jesus because who they were is not who they are. We have been delivered from being dead to our sins, being trapped by our addictions, being guilty from our worst day to the new creation that God has called us to be. Amen? I mean, some of you are going, but Father Daniel, I've been on the straight and narrow all my life. Right? I know about four of you. <laughs> the rest of us have had a life B.C. <clears throat> Anybody out there have a life being a beast? What's B.C.? Before Christ. Anybody out there have a life B.C.? Come on now. A couple of you, the rest of you have been going, no, I'm good all along. <laughs> But if you stop to think about where you were before you met Jesus and how you are different today, then you have a life and you have a gospel to share with the world. And that is your community service, to go out and share that news. Because somebody out there needs to hear what you've got to say. Somebody out there is going through the exact same thing because there are no new sins. There are no new evils. There are no new ways for us to have break, broken God's law. They've all been done before. And I suspect that if we were honest with ourselves in this room, we would have broke most of them. And there are other people out there who have done the same and they need to hear how God has loved you how God has changed you, how the risen Son has saved you, and how it is available to them. And there is such joy and such blessing when we go out and open ourselves to do the community service that God wants us to do. We do it by keeping our ears open, keeping our eyes open, and be willing to speak the truth in love. Last week, uh, Jane and I had a wonderful adventure. We got to drive a 42-foot bus from here to Houston through 300 miles of road construction and downtown Houston traffic. Oh, boy. Now, you can imagine that we were just fine by the time we dropped off that bus. And we were really excited that after four hours of sleep, we had to make our way to the airport 
and go through another 45 minute ordeal because somebody forgot their driver's license and didn't have any identification that was necessary to get on the airplane. <laughs> it wasn't even him. Okay. But I wasn't going to throw you under the bus we just drove. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Day before yesterday, it was her birthday, so I'm still sucking up. <laughs> but it took us 45 minutes, but fortunately, we had enough other paperwork to be able to get on the airplane. And to make matters worse, it wasn't even a non-stop from here to, from Houston to here. We had to go from Houston to San Antonio, and then from San Antonio to here. But while we were sitting in the San Antonio airport, having a layover, we, we decided that we needed something to drink. So we went to a watering hole and sat down for a beverage. And as we were sitting at the table enjoying our beverage, waiting for the time to pass, a young lady came through and she was standing right next to us. She had a stroller and then the stroller was a, an infant. And she grabbed a beer and this woman was slamming this beer down. I mean, she was, it was like, you know, I recognize that look. And she bumped up against my chair and she said, excuse me, I said, oh, no problem, it's all good. She goes, I'm sorry, I'm just a little anxious. And you know, that's an open door. To ask the question, what are you anxious about? And it's as if by prompted by the Holy Spirit, she then laid out her whole story. She had a three-month-old. The child's father died when she was three months pregnant. So she was a new single mom, and she had just taken the child back to the father's parents' house so that they could meet the infant for the first time all by herself. And she was now getting on the airplane to go back to her parents in Baltimore where she was going to live and try to develop some kind of life without a father. And you know, looking up at her, you can just see that her eyes beginning to swell. And we said, hey, uh, I'm a priest. <laughs> can we pray for you? <laughs> <laughs> Sat down and reached out her arms and bowed her head. And was like, come on now, I need some prayer. So here, sitting in a San Antonio airport, in the middle of a bar, praying for a woman who's undergoing something the likes of which we wouldn't wish on anybody. Doing some community service there in public. And I prayed for her, and Jane prayed for her, and then she prayed, and then I prayed, and she prayed. We sat there for a good three, four, or five minutes in prayer, heads bowed, holding the hands, in a bar, lifting this young lady and her child up before God. My brothers and sisters, that's an example of community service. But some of you have been going, hey, Father Daniel, that's your job. <laughs> You're really good at that. Right? That's what you've been paid to do. That's what you've been called to do. Guess what, my brothers and sisters? Each person in here has been called to do the exact same thing the exact same thing. You don't need a four-year Master's of Divinity degree to have your eyes open and to speak words of love from your heart to another person's heart when the Holy Spirit opens the door for that to happen in your life. You may say, well, Father Daniel, I don't know what words to pray. Oh, that's not true. And you don't have to worry about what words to pray because the Holy Spirit will give them to you in that moment. And all you're doing is having a conversation with God. Do you not know that God already knows what you're thinking, so all you got to do is open up your mouth and let the words come out? 
Whenever that situation arrives, it is an opportunity to show that the sun is risen in our lives and do community service to a person who needs it. To be of service to a person who needs what you have. To lift them and yourself up before God. Now I know there are a couple of people in the congregation that will do this immediately, who have no problems doing it, Bridget. <laughs> Who will pray at the drop of a hat? Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> Bridget doesn't have any special training, but what she has is a willingness to show the love of Christ to anybody who gets in her way. Margaret. Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> and do it on a fairly regular basis, Hoss. Who takes the time at work in the middle of a busy lunch hour, Leanne, and stop and hold hands and pray for those who are in need. Look around you, my brothers and sisters. We have a cloud of witnesses that will stand up, reach their hands out as Christ reached his hands out for us. To show them love. And do it any place they can, Paul. Anybody here interested in doing some community service work? Anybody out there interested in doing some community service work? Go ahead. When the door opens. May we remember what Christ did for us this day. When the opportunity presents itself, remember what God did for his son this day. Because, hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Turning to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, in the Red Book of Common Prayer, page 358. <clears throat> Let us stand and affirm what we know to be true is written for us in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. When I ask you, my brothers and sisters, what do you believe? Together, we believe in one God, the Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of God. Oh, 
church. We acknowledge our baptism with the greatest of sins. We look at the religious church that day and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kneeling, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Kneel if you can, sit if you want. Prayers of the people for the Easter season are Form 4 and can be found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer and on your online bulletin. Let us pray for the church and for the world. We pray especially for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Michael Hahn and Jerry Lamb, our bishops, and Daniel and Scott, our priests. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth. Live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Lord. guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray especially for Joe, our president, and Greg and Michelle, our governors. Lord, in your mercy, Lord. give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he has loved us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Today we pray for Paul, Rick, Samuel, Bertha, Michael, Robert, the Taylor family, Tina L., Bishop Michael B., Chance, Keenan, Joe M., Estella, Nicole, Greg, Brianna, Terry, Dave Baker, Keith W., Royce, Pat, Bab, Jane, Reverend Judy B, Yolanda S, Cheryl B, Elsie. In the churches we recite all the prayer, we pray for St. John's and Church of the Holy Spirit in Farmington. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those in the military, all firefighters and first responders, healthcare professional teachers, and educators. We pray for those affected by COVID-19 and the conflict in Ukraine. Please add your own intercessions and thanksgivings, either silently or not. Father, thank you for healing my mother. We thank you, Father, for the sound of children in church. What a blessing. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help, for you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On page 360. 
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let's spend a moment or two in personal confession and reflection before we continue with our public corporate confession. Give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. Saturday in May is our Blessing of the Bikes, which is an absolutely fabulous time where any two and three wheel conveyance are invited to come here and we bless them and we pray over the riders and it is a great time. We've got some flyers out in the narthex, that's the entryway, so take them, put them up all over creation. If you want to put them on your Facebook, contact Lorenzo and he'll send you one electronically so we can get the word out so that we can get as many Bikes here because we're getting into that season where it is fun to be outside. Uh, second, in just a few minutes, we are going to be setting the table. Um, communion in this church is open to anyone. If you are hungry for the love of Christ, if you are thirsty for the refreshment of Christ, if you need to feel some of the grace of Christ, you're welcome at this table. We will have two stations. Uh, I will be working one, Father Scott will be working the other. Because we are in a really strange time, and we've had to roll back some of the things that we normally do, we are serving both body and blood, wafer and wine. But we're asking everyone today to intinct, that is to take the wafer, don't eat it immediately, and dip it into the cup as it comes past you. All right. If you can't take the blood in any form, if you can't take the wine, that's okay. You can take the body alone, you just can't take the blood alone. You can take the bread alone, you just can't drink the wine by itself. 
Okay? If for your own personal convictions you can receive neither body or blood, that is fine. We would still ask you to come and sit at the table with us, and I will pronounce or Scott will pronounce God's blessing. When we come to you, just cross your hands like so, and that will be a sign for us to uh, ask a blessing for you. Do we have any gluten intolerant, gluten restricted, any celiacs in the congregation? If you do, great, no problem. We've got some gluten-free wafers up here that have been untouched by human hands. So we won't cross-contaminate. You would just need to let us know so that we can grab the special container of them, bring it to you so that you can take it out yourself. They will be blessed and you will be joining with us in the common bread with all. Birthdays and anniversaries, do we have any celebrating any Easter birthdays? At least one. Anniversary. We got an anniversary. Well, we got her last week. Right, and I tried to get her this morning. This is my wife. Yeah, yeah. we got her last. I tried to get her earlier today, and I was rebuffed most sincerely. Okay, but we do have an anniversary here. Come on down. Come down. Listen, you put it all over Facebook. We can shout it out in church. Amen. <laughs> You get to come down here today. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. So, <laughs> she's holding on to Goober for good reason. <laughs> hey, how long have you been married? 54 years. 54 Whoa. years. Come on now. <laughs> and let me guess, you're going to be holding on for a whole lot longer, right? <laughs> and the other reason she's... Yes, as many as the good. The other reason is, is that while they were out at rodeo, she kicked Goober no. hard, no. and she broke her ankle no. in the process. No, no. that's not what happened. That's not what happened. There, there, are, there are two against one here, but it's us against all of you. <laughs> we're even at a rodeo. No. Um, actually, well, I thought that sounded a whole lot better than you just lost your footing and fell down the stairs. <laughs> which song? Which, you like better she kicked him <laughs> versus she tripped and fell yes. See? That the truth knew. <laughs> 54 years oh my right God. here right here got married here right had all your children here most of them right fought here some <laughs> reconciled here yes yeah. and loved here Grand prayed here, here. Well, let's pray for him today. <laughs> Almighty God and Father, we give you such thanks for this cup. You have been sharing their love with each other for these past 54 years. Have been an example to the world as to what can happen when two commit themselves to each other through your spirit and in your power and are a shining example of your love to the world. Be with Sandra and Guru this day as always. Bind them closer to each other. We pray that you will put a hedge of protection around them so that nothing can divide them, but draw them closer to you. We pour out a blessing on them, and we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Any other announcements for the good? Oh, the bar, oh. Barn sale on the main day of the season. Yep, that first Saturday, which I think is May 1st? May the first Saturday in May. Oh! The bishop is coming! The bishop is coming! The end of this month, the bishop will be here on the 26th and 27th, right? Um, he would like to have an evening service, an evening Eucharist, to break bread with us. And we're going to do that at 6 o'clock on Tuesday, the 26th. After that, he would like to have an open house, a Q&A for you to come and ask questions. And he would like to interact with all of us, all of you, that day. He also would like to have a meeting with the vestry. You will receive it. More than likely, it's going to be a Zoom meeting. More than likely. 
and we're thinking about that being that Tuesday, but that's still being finalized. Okay. Um, so uh, this would be an opportunity for you to come and, and join us for a rare midweek service. It's an opportunity for you to come to meet our bishop, who really is a lovely man, all right, and truly has a soft spot in his heart for this cool little church in the country. So uh, put that on your calendars, the 26th, the 27th. If you would like to meet with him personally, if you'd like to have a one-on-one, -on -one, let me know that so we can arrange a time for that to take place. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Out of thoughts, this I said, he knew that he would soon be dead. He said, did you forget me, Father, did you? They nailed him to a wooden cross, and all the world would feel the loss of Christ to keep before his hallelujah. 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 said that he had lost his mind, no one could ever be so blind, to think that just a heart of love could do your heart. A reed which felt his final soul was gently lifted to his lips, for the rest he fled a broken hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The soldier who had used his soul to pierce the body of our Lord said, Truly, this is Jesus Christ, our Savior. He looked with fear upon his soul, then turned to face his Christ and Lord, fell to his teeth, a crying, Hallelujah! 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 His death was like a cold wind flowing through you. The love had died and hope was gone. The light real love was darkly drawn. There were no voices singing, Hallelujah. 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 But then there came a brand new day, the crushing stone was rolled away, and death fell back while life came rushing through ya. The power of love that stood the test, the whole world's heart and life was blessed, and answered through the chorus. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Please stand.
page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 361. Take away the sin. 
for the world, and the mercy of ours. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and the mercy of ours. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and the mercy of ours. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them remembering that Jesus Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been set. He is our host. We are his guest. The table is open to any who are hungry, all who are thirsty. Please come forward to the table of grace.
on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 365. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us into the universe of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sign of his power and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Before we get to our processional hymn, we are processing into the world. That's why it's a processional hymn. Um, we do have a plethora of candy-filled Easter eggs. Is that not right, Miss Patricia? Right. Okay, and Miss Patricia, where have those Easter eggs been hidden? Stand, stand up. <laughs> I just got done doing it. <laughs> um, here in the courtyard, um, it's for the egg hunt for the little eight what? Six? Yeah, six and under. Six and under. Six and under. Out there. In um, David's garden. David's garden. In David's garden, which is when you walk out, just keep going that direction and you'll fall into it. Yes. Yes. Uh, for the older kiddos, right here is the front of the church, right here in the grass area. Because there was a flood going on back there and we didn't want them to try to go through that. So if you're older than six, you're going to be right here in the front, within the grass. All right. There are plenty of eggs. So you do not need to run and trample over each other. <laughs> and if we see trampling, that means that parent tax comes into play. How many of you parents know what the parent tax is? It means we get all their candy. We get all the candy. Oh, he does a great parent Yes. And we learn a little, we don't have a basket. Okay, so you know what we're going to do is we're going to dismiss, we'll sing our processional. We're all going to go into the parish hall first for coffee, and then we will ring a bell when it is time for the littles to go out for the Easter egg hunt. All right? So you just can't leave, go out the door, and dissipate. you got to go into the parish hall and wait for the ringing of the bell. Is that understood? Yeah, and I'm talking to the parents. Is that <laughs> Kids got it. It's the parents. Please, please stand. They say this mountain can be home. They say these chains will never Yeah. 